There's one. There's one. Here we go. Look at this beast right here. That's live squid for you right there. Well, as asked for in previous videos, I'm going to show you guys how I've been catching these live squid, which are pretty much candy for almost any fish that swims out here on the California coast. So if all goes as planned, we're going to jig up a few of these and then use them to catch some pretty big fish. So stay tuned. It's going to be a fun episode. Okay, so first things first, when you're charting squid, you need a rod and reel. And uh, in my opinion, the rod and reel is not that important, to be honest. This is my salmon rod. And uh, one reason why I like this one is because it has a nice soft tip. I don't know if you can see that there. And I'll get back to that later why that's important. But like I said, you don't need anything special. If you already have a deep sea rod when you jig for rockfish or when you've used for salmon in the past, that'll work just fine. And then on the business end, this is what I have here. This is a squid jig. And I'll try to find one on Amazon. These are actually kind of difficult to find these days. Um, but I'll try to find one on Amazon, leave a link in the description below. All it is is a little trio of beads, a little orange bead, a glow in the dark bead. And then below that is this little alien looking uh, life form. It's basically a bunch of little upward facing prongs. So basically how this works is the squid will come in and tack this little glow bead because they're attracted to light. And then this little upward facing prong thing will get them as they're trying to attack it. This will attach to their um, tentacles. It's super, super sharp, so be careful if you have one. So you may have seen my previous videos where I use little sabikis to catch these squid. And if that's all you have, by all means use that. It'll definitely work. Um, but the reason for this squid jig and why it's a little more effective and people choose to use this if they're targeting squid is that it'll weed out all those other little sand dabs or small rockfish that might be down swimming in those same areas. Um, those kinds of fish won't get attached to this little squid jig. So this jig eliminates all that hassle and you, you're solely just gonna target squid with this. So once you get it in the water, right now uh, the squid are all congregating near the bottom. So I'm just dropping it down to the bottom. And the way I know that is I can see them on my fish finder. Now the squid, in my experience, don't show up, at least on my fish finder, the way that um, normal bait fish would. These are much uh, thinner, it's much lighter color, so they're sometimes hard to see, but if you look closely, there's a lot of time, on my fish finder at least, there's these faint blue marks, um, which indicate squid. And I think that's because um, they don't have any bones. They're not, they're not built like a normal bait fish. It's almost like a, like a jellyfish almost. Um, but they do show up on a fish finder, they're just a little bit more faint. So then finally, last but not least, once you get to the squid area, you found them, you located them, you got all your rod and reel set up, you got your squid jig on, last thing to do is just jig them up. And the way that I like to do it is just like you would work any other bait jig, any sabiki, just kind of jig it up and down. And ideally, once that, that glow bead's moving, it'll attract the squid in. Once they attack it on the jig up, that upward pronged um, little piece is gonna catch their, their tentacles and then you bring them right in. There's another one. There's another one. Not gonna fight at all. You'll notice it's just a little bit heavier than it normally is. And if you bring it all the way up. Come on. In there. Oh, look at that. We even got two of them. Plus the beauty of this little rig here is there's six little jigs on here, so you can get more than one at a time. So there's two, one, and two. So I'm gonna jig up a few more of these, and then we'll catch you on the inshore grounds where we're gonna use these to catch some big fish. All right guys, we got plenty of these guys right here, fresh squid. And the first fish we're gonna target is halibut. So we're in a shallower, sandier area than where we were catching the, uh, the squid. And this is where these halibut tend to hang out, kind of waiting for a bait fish to come along. Have you ever seen a halibut? It's one of those flat fish that sits right on the bottom. Camouflage with the sand, so that's why you wanna look for sandy areas. And that's what we have here. So we're gonna drop all our lines in, hope for a big one.
There's one. There's one. There's a fish. Oh, that's a heavy one for sure. Pretty sure it's a halibut. It's funny, I was just kind of setting up and then I felt the weight. The weight was there. Like I said before, fresh squid, halibut candy. You can see the head shakes there. That's a telltale sign of a halibut. If you think about it, those fish, they, they go like this, they swim like this on the floor. So anytime they're shaking their head like that, that's that bobbing that you see on the, on the tip of my rod there. Here's the bend in that rod, baby. This is a, my lighter rod, but for some reason, if you've been watching my videos, for some reason this rod tends to catch all the fish. I don't know why. It's just a lucky rod, I guess. fish too, good size. If you watched my last video, I've got a 20 pounder. This one, I think it's similar size, maybe, maybe a touch smaller, maybe a touch bigger, I don't know. So ideal gaff shot, you're gonna gaff them right behind the gill plate in the on the underside in the belly section if you can get it there like that that's a good one right there all right i got him there let's get him on the stringer first thing to do always put him on the stringer yeah, especially on the kayak you don't really want to deal with a fish flopping around unless you have it secured business, always get them on the string. So, now let's get the gaff out. And there we go, there's our first fish. Here we go, look at this beast right here. That's live squid for you right there. Just, just, some, just for fun. So minimum size in California, if you want to catch and keep a halibut, is 22 inches. And this one is definitely over that, but let's see how much over that he is. Right at the end of the board, which is 36 inches. Just a touch, one inch smaller than my last one from my last video. So my last video, I caught one that was 30, it was 37 or 38 inches. Honestly, it was bigger than my board, so I don't know exactly how big it was, but um, it weighed 20 pounds. This one, one inch shorter, 36 inches, probably 19, close to 20 pounds as well. So a quality halibut for sure, but they do get a lot bigger than this. I mean, you can catch them twice this size. I'm not sure what the record is in California. I'd probably guess it's 50 something pounds probably. But uh, if you caught a 30 pounder, that's like pretty much a once in a lifetime type catch. But 20 pounds, we'll take it. Fresh squid, 20 pound halibut. That's how it's done. All right guys, that's gonna wrap it up for this video. Hopefully that answered a few questions. I know some of you have been asking um, in my recent videos, kind of questions about how to catch squid, what am I looking for, you know, stuff like that. So hopefully this answered a few of those questions. So I appreciate all those comments and this video wouldn't have been made if it wasn't for you guys. So if you have any questions about this video or any of my videos that, you know, in the past or in the future that I'll be posting, um, feel free to leave a comment below. And even if I don't respond to it, I definitely see it. So 
Um, again, thank you guys for all your comments in my past videos. If you want to get this squid jig right here, I'll leave a link in the description. And uh, yeah, get out and get your own squid. I mean, as you saw, halibut will definitely eat it. Lingcod will eat it. Rockfish will eat it. Pretty much everything here on the California coastline. Um, dare I say, sea bass will also eat it. Um, but yeah, it's kind of like the golden bait out here on the West Coast. So if you can find it, and if you can catch it yourself, you're good to go. So anyways, thank you guys for watching. Hope you guys are staying safe. If you are able to fish, make sure you're doing it responsibly, safely, keeping in mind the safety of yourself as well as others. And uh, until the next video, we'll see you next time.